Good evening and welcome to a special Wales today. We're live in the heart of Cardiff tonight, awaiting the arrival of the Olympic flame on the hottest day of the year so far. Yeah, you're not going to believe this, but it is hotter here than in Greece, where the Olympic torch started that journey all those days ago. Well, the Olympic torch uh, crossed over the border from England into Wales at Monmouth earlier this morning and was greeted by huge crowds of thousands of people who lined the streets to go and have a glimpse of the torch, of course, but also to cheer on the torch bearers, both young and old, as they start this their Welsh leg of the journey. Well, we have got every angle covered in the capital for you tonight. Our reporters are along the route and we're on board the convoy as it passes through the streets of Cardiff. This is the scene live now, currently making its way down Newport Road. The good news is we're told it's bang on time and this is where it's headed, live to Coopersfield in the next hour. Stay with us as the torch relay begins its six-day journey around Wales. Good evening, a very warm welcome. The Olympic flame has arrived in Wales and it's due here within the next hour. We're here in Coopersfield in the shadows of Cardiff Castle. There's a concert underway to celebrate its arrival. 16,000 people are here. This is what they've all come to see. And on the stage, you will see the celebration cauldron. And that is where the final torchbearer will light the Olympic flame. Well, the bands have been playing for uh, hours and hours now entertaining the crowds of uh, thousands of people who've gathered here this evening. It's going to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and you're going to see it all live from the comfort of your chair. So don't move. You're going to see it all here in the specially extended edition of BBC Wales today. Uh, let's whiz outside and let's go and see where the torch is just at the moment. This is Newport Road on the outskirts of uh, Cardiff, and you can see the huge crowds it's is Lynn Davis here, the Olympian carrying the Olympic torch. How fantastic. I, I spoke to him in the week and he couldn't wait for this moment. He was over the moon to be honoured and, and asked to do it. And the fact that he is running the Olympic torch uh, through Lynn is just an incredible moment for him. There you are. Look, this is what they call kissing, Jamie. This is kissing. This is kissing. And um, when they light the flame from one torchbearer to another, look, and there he's got it. And let me tell you, this man who of course won gold uh, in 1964 basically for, for Team GB. There you are, there's the helicopter shot now, so we'll be able to see his route as he heads here. Uh, he'll be heading next uh, right the way through to Cardiff Castle before it gets here. Uh, but let me just um, introduce one of our presentation team with us tonight. He's one of our most celebrated, best-known athletes. Ewan Thomas is here. Of course, he won a silver in Atlanta. And Ewan, there it is. Uh, as an Olympian, what do you make of this today? It's amazing. When I was a competitor, obviously my head was down, I was focused, I was just training. You didn't actually get to be part of great celebrations like this. But I think what this shows is the Welsh nation getting behind it. And, and it truly is a Great Britain Olympics. Everyone talks about, oh, it's only going to be in London. But look at the crowd. I mean, 16,000 people have come here to look at the torch tonight. And uh, I'm very proud to be Welsh and I'm very proud to be part of your team tonight. <laughs> but what does Wales get anything out of it, apart from one great party like tonight? I mean, what does Wales get out of, out of this? Well, actually, the Millennium Stadium just over there is going to host the first event of the Olympics. It's going to have the football, which I think is on two days before the opening ceremony. So Wales have definitely got a, pl a part to play in the Olympics. And what I'm proud of is just the fact that the whole nation do seem to be getting behind the Games. And I, for one, can't wait for London. And here in Wales, especially in Cardiff, we always put on a good event and the crowds always turn out. And uh, it's a lovely day as it's well for It's lovely, it. lovely. Well, gorgeous. more from you, Anne, in just a minute. We'll see you a little later. But as I said, our reporters are out and about. Let's see if we can go live now at to the convoy. Uh, you can see the torchbearer. Uh, there they are running. And our reporter, Thomas David, is on board. Let's see if we can hear him. Well, very good evening. I think you might just recognize 107. He is, of course, Lynn Davis, or Lynn the Leap, as he's known. 
and he's just waving to the crowds here at the lower end of Newport Road, one of the main thoroughfares into the city centre. And there are thousands and thousands of people who have come out to witness this moment. Lynn Davis, of course, it's a landmark show week for him, carrying the torch today, and he was celebrating his 70th birthday just last Sunday. It has been a, a spectacular day today. You are next to the wall of sound. And as I'm talking, there's a man who has tried to um, approach Linda Leap and he has been dealt with quite robustly by the uh, police uh, bodyguard there. Um, it hasn't faced Linda Leap. He is still smiling, still waving, and even now moving closer to Cooper's Fields. Thomas David, thank you very much indeed. Thomas David reporting from uh, the Olympic Torch Convoy. Well, there are just thousands of people all over this route who've been standing at the side of the road since 8 o'clock this very morning, early. waiting for the right moment. And uh, just a short distance from here, huge crowds outside the castle, but also outside City Hall in Cardiff, where we can join Lucy Owen and Jason Mohammed. Yes, good evening. We're live outside Cardiff City Hall in front of the giant Olympic rings and we are waiting for that very special moment when the Olympic torch is carried past this iconic symbol of the Games right here in the heart of our capital. I'll tell you something, Lucy, it's a stunning atmosphere here at City Hall. There are people soaking up the sun, soaking up the atmosphere, and they're all getting very excited because the crowds are lining Boulevard de Nantes where the torch is about to come. It's a very, very special atmosphere here tonight. These are incredible scenes. This is the live helicopter shot now. We're also outside Cardiff Castle tonight. Sean Lloyd is there for us. Yes, I'm outside the castle, just around the corner from City Hall. And what a party atmosphere there is here. When the Olympic torch relay arrives outside the castle, it will pause to allow the torchbearer, Wayne Jenkins, to carry the Olympic flame inside the castle grounds for an opportunity to take photos. And what an opportunity that could be for one couple, because Craig and Emma Marshall got married in the castle this afternoon. And we wonder whether they are going to have a very special photograph. We'll keep you posted. And other stories making the news in Wales today. Workmen cut a chronically obese teenager free from her Aberdare home. Georgia Davis weighs more than 50 stone. And Hollyhead to Cardiff train cut. Savings for the taxpayer, but fears that passengers could lose out. Well, there is great excitement here, isn't there, Jason? Because the torch, we are told, is just minutes away. You yep. can feel the excitement building, can't you? Just around the corner, there's a police convoy now, which usually means that the torch is imminent. I was at Blind Avon earlier today when the torch came into Big Pit. Great excitement, and I know the people behind us are waiting for it now. They're going to give us a big cheer because they're very excited about it. One guy, one guy's even been here since half past three to make sure he gets his place for this wonderful moment. It really is a once in a lifetime opportunity for these people to see the Olympic flame. It is, and it's a wonderful sense of a family occasion here today. And earlier I met a little seven week old baby, 10 month old twins. There are older children here as well, people from all generations. Thousands, I would say, gathered here in the city centre, hundreds in the field in front of the Olympic rings here, and hundreds lining the Boulevard de Nantes where we are expecting the arrival of the Olympic torch in any second. I can hear cheers further down the route, which might imply it is on its way past these Olympic rings in not too long at all. I should also tell you, we're hoping to speak to Lynn Davis as well. Lynn the Leap, as he's known to some, after he carried the torch. Claire said that she spoke to him in the week. I spoke to him on Radio Wales, and he was talking about just what a moment this is. It's right up there with winning a gold medal at the Olympics in Tokyo. And it's going to come along Boulevard de Nantes, where you can see thousands of people have just turned up, Lucy, in the past five or ten minutes. You know, we've been standing here for a while, and it was empty. And then within ten minutes, all these people have turned up and our torchbearer is about to come past these two rapturous applause the reunion jacks being waved and welsh flags as well and as you said lucy what a great what a wonderful atmosphere especially for some of the younger members of the crowd here tonight it's fantastic to hear the cheers of the crowd isn't it and how wonderful that lynn davis lynn the leap carrying the 
Olympic torch. The first Welshman, wasn't he, to win a gold Olympic medal? We can see the convoy here passing along the boulevard to Nantes. And I can see... Yeah, here they come. Here it comes. for that torchbearer because everybody else has carried it even Lynn carried it down Newport Road but she actually carried it past the Olympic ring so that's something she's gonna remember forever a very very thrilling atmosphere here outside City Hall okay well it's on its way to the castle we'll see live pictures of the helicopter in just a minute uh, we should be able to see it there it is and it's on its way here to the castle look at that you can just see from that picture now isn't that absolutely spectacular Thousands and thousands of people have come out on this glorious day on the end of May to come and look at this historic moment in the shadow of those civic buildings, the historic castle, the university, to look at another chapter of Welsh history being written. Isn't that spectacular? And on such a glorious evening, this is the hottest day of the it year. Is. And we're being given um, regular updates here. We're lucky enough, Jamie and I stood here, that we can see the monitor. But basically, the crowd here, 14,000 people, are being told uh, by a microphone every couple of minutes how close it is. And there's a huge cheer every minute that they know it's coming closer and closer. It's getting very close now. We know that because we can hear the helicopter just above us now. And the helicopter means that it's in touching distance of Cardiff Castle. Uh, you're looking at the civic buildings there, those spectacular buildings which uh, mean that it's so tantalizingly close to uh, the big party lighting the cauldron just behind us now. And look at those crowds, absolutely massive crowds. Sean Lloyd uh, can join us now. At Cardiff Castle there is a huge sense of here at Cardiff Castle there is a huge sense of expectation, a party atmosphere, crowds of people have turned out enjoying the sunshine and looking forward to seeing the Olympic torch come right alongside them. We're keeping our eye out for Wayne Jenkins, he's going to be standing over on the corner there because that is where he is going to pick up the Olympic torch. He's been nominated by his daughter who has travelled from London today to be here with him to support her dad on a very proud day. He's been nominated for the work that he's done with Sport Wales. For 32 years he has been helping young people achieve their sporting dreams here in Wales. So a very proud day for him. He is going to carry the Olympic torch into Cardiff Castle and every time we hear something we wonder what is going to come around that corner and so do the crowd. Well it's been a phenomenal day here in Wales. Of course the Olympic torch began its journey in Monmouth and our reporters have been following it throughout the day. Burning on Welsh soil for the first time, the Olympic flame burst into life on the outskirts of Monmouth. The first torchbearer was Gareth John, the chair of Disability Sport Wales, a man who's devoted himself to helping others achieve their goals in disability sport. But today, with his family watching on, it was him who took centre stage. How was that? Excellent. That's one of the best times of my life. Uh, and what was it like with the crowd uh, cheering? Uplifting. The best word I can use. Very proud for people of Wales. Uh, and of all the things you've done in, in sport, where does this stand? It's got to be the top, isn't it? It was very emotional and um, such a privilege to see him. He's been passionate about disability sport for many, many years now and worked towards providing facilities and inclusion of disability with other sports and it's just wonderful that it has happened. There was a party atmosphere on the streets, 16,000 people filled the town centre, many of them school children. The pupils from Trelech Primary School performed their own Olympic dance. Just after 11 o'clock, the first kiss, when the flame was transferred between torchbearers, as it will be in more than 80 towns and cities across Wales. Well 
But as the torch uh, moves around Wales, it'll um, show different parts of Wales to the world, and uh, that's important in terms of projecting our nation to the world. Well, the fine weather certainly contributed to a big turnout. People seem to be really excited to see the Olympic flame in here in Wales, especially because it's being carried by people who've made a real difference in their communities. Fitness fanatic Kelvin Perrett, who took the flame across the medieval Mono Bridge, has suffered from cancer, a heart attack and a knee replacement. But he's still running and was nominated for his commitment to Cumbran Rugby Club. Oh, it's brilliant. The crowds are magnificent, you know, it's just... They carried you along and uh, dream come true, you know, it's uh, fabulous. After leaving Monmouth, next stop was Raglan. <laughs> then it was on to Abergavenny. Before the relay passed through Bryn Mawr. There was no one happier to be there than Nadine Stroik. She was a Dutch synchronised swimmer with hopes of going to the Olympics until her team was disbanded. She now helps younger swimmers to achieve what she never could. She passed the flame on to James Edwards from Ebu Vale. He was a promising judo player until a car accident left him paralysed. He was nominated for his inspirational positive attitude. He still trains every week and has taken up climbing. At lunchtime, the flame stopped at the Big Pit National Coal Museum in Blyne Avon. Fittingly, the flame burns in a miner's lamp between stages, and so it could be safely taken down the mine. Then it was up onto the pit head, where 16-year-old tennis player Ellie Costa set the relay back on its way. The first person to be leaving here, I'm really excited, but it's a bit nerve-wracking as well. <laughs> As the relay made its way south through Abrasakan, 13-year-old Rhys Williams carried the flame. His grandfather, Alan Bonner, had been nominated for his tireless fundraising for cancer research. But late last year, after a long battle against the disease, he died. And so his grandson carried the flame in his memory. She won't be with me physically, but I think he will be down there carrying the torch with me. And, uh, you know, it is, it is hard, but, you know... We've, we've, you know, still a big event. The next town en route was Pontypool. Before the relay picked up pace towards Newport. In getting there, it bypassed one of the area's biggest towns, Cumbran, to the disappointment of people there. They put in other areas on a map which are, you know, not important to me or my friends. Like my, I had to pay for my daughter to go and watch it up in Pontypool <laughs> for the school, so they should have come here, yeah. Over the next five days, the flame will be carried around the country, travelling from Cardiff to Swansea tomorrow, and then heading north via Aberystwyth, before working its way across the North Wales coast, eventually leaving Wales on Wednesday. If today's crowds in Newport are anything to go by, it'll be quite a journey. Well supported, fantastic. Wonderful, weather yes. fantastic. I think it was wonderful. They're really well supported, and the children were all so excited. It was lovely. Everyone got into the spirit of the occasion, especially 75-year-old Marlene Barnett, who got more than she bargained for at her changeover kiss, before she and others carried the flame along the road to the capital. Well, I've come inside the castle grounds now, and actually I am right in the middle of a wedding. Can you believe it? On this very, very important day for the whole of Wales, the torchbearer ran in behind me, literally as we were running in here as well, and stayed for a couple of moments just over there for photographs to be taken, and quite a few of the wedding guests here did get in on the act, I can tell you. Well, it's been a very big day for Caitlin Next, and Caitlin, age 12, you're one of the youngest torchbearers in the whole of the UK. Okay, and you ran in Newport today. How did it go? It was really good. It was amazing. Amazing experience. Now, we know that everybody who carries that torch has to have a very special inspirational story. What's yours? Um, well, I got chosen by my school, Witchet, um, as one of the Year 7 pupils um, because apparently, I don't know, they just told me, but I, um, I had illnesses when I was a young child. I was born with a bigger kidney. Um, and I've done a lot of charity events like Race for Life and stuff.
Well, well done you. I know that you, you can relax now because you were a bit nervous about it, but I know you enjoyed it as well. Well, someone who's going to be carrying the Olympic torch tomorrow in Swansea, Richard Parks, of course. Uh, well, <laughs> you've had a brilliant career in rugby, in mountaineering challenges now. Um, what's it going to be like carrying the torch? Oh, I'm, I'm so excited about it. I mean, it's such a huge honour, and especially because I was nominated by the general public. And to be a small part of the Olympics coming to, uh, coming to Britain and to Wales, it's, it's incredible. Well, Richard, I know I did tell you there was a wedding here. Let's get them in. The bride and groom, a very happy photograph. We are, we are following that torch. So a round of a cheers from them at Cardiff Castle. <laughs> Great scenes there and great scenes as the torch makes its way to Cooper's Field here. Just look at the thousands of people that have turned out to see it. Plenty more inside Cooper's Field, 14,000 inside here waiting for its arrival. Let me just tell you quickly, if you want to know if it's coming very close to you, a very detailed map, bbc.co.uk slash torch relay. Let's have a word with a, a former Olympian and one hoping to become a future Olympian, Jess Fishlock, hoping to play for Team GB in the women's football. But Jamie's been there, done it, got the medal. I don't know, you runners and your medals. I've met, already met your friend Ewan. Um, Jamie, you're actively very much involved in sports still. Yeah. But what about this tonight? What does this do for sport in Wales? This is fantastic. You know, it's definitely brought it home to Wales, you know. This is what I love about it. You know, people are saying that Welsh and the Wales uh, side of it, we haven't got the Olympics. We've obviously got the football. We've got an amazing night. I've been told that we're hotter in Athens today. It Look at it, it's fantastic. And Jess, I mean, you could be playing in the Olympic Games. You could be playing in the Millennium Stadium just over the way from here. I mean, what, what does that feel like, just to see all this massive amount of support for people like you? Well, you know, coming here and, and witnessing this already, without, without there being any Team GB to support, I mean, the 25th of July, if it's here, it's home, and you're involved in it, you just know that, that Wales are going to put on a great spectacle. And, and Jess, the FAW have had huge reservations on a day like this. No, you will definitely play if you're picked. Absolutely. Well, listen, both have a wonderful evening. It's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Good, good to see you both, and we wish you every success, of course. Um, the tension's just building now, because as you can probably tell, we are just moments away from the Olympic torch it's arriving in Cardiff, in Cooper's Field, and setting a light, that huge cauldron behind us on the stage here in Cooper's Field. You won't miss a thing. Stay with us here on this specially extended edition of BBC Wales Today, where we're now going to update you with the rest of the day's news and Gary Owen. Jamie, thank you very much. Other news in Wales now. A 19-year-old woman, once described as Britain's fattest teenager, has had to be cut free from her home after becoming ill. Forty people were involved in the operation to rescue Georgia Davis from Aberdeer and part of the house had to be demolished to bring her out. Caroline Evans reports. Georgia Davis has struggled with her weight almost her entire life. She says her problem with food began with the death of her father when she was five. By the time she was 15, she weighed 33 stone. Her life changed when, in 2009, she went to America. At the Wellspring Academy in North Carolina, she lost almost half that weight. It gave her hope. My life was um, very dim. I couldn't do much. I was always tired. I really didn't go out of the house. I didn't think much of my future. I really didn't think I had one. But ever since losing all the weight, now I'm happier. I'm definitely um, positive and more confident. I go out a lot now and um, I definitely think I have a future. But at home in Aberdeer, without the support she told us she needed, she put it all back on and more. It's thought her weight now could be more than 50 stone. Well, there's a lot of sympathy. At the end of the day, when she, when she, when she came back from America, if she'd have had the, the care and attention, the, the money they spent on yesterday to get out of the house, you know what I mean? They could have been prevented from it. It took specialist teams of scaffolders, fire officers, police and paramedics eight hours to get Georgia out of her house. First they built a bridge, then they cut a ten-foot hole in the wall before lifting her into a specially reinforced ambulance. Her parents have now had to be rehoused while repairs are being carried out. Today the Cum Tav Health Board hasn't given an update on her condition except to say that she had a settled night and they're now assessing her to establish a care plan. Caroline Evans, BBC Wales Today, Aberdeer.
Nearly 150 jobs are at risk at a factory in Merthyr Tydfil. Consultation has begun on proposals by the packaging firm Ardar Group to close its aerosol spray manufacturing plant in Aberkanaid. The company says this is part of its plans to restructure in the UK and will look at opportunities to redeploy staff elsewhere if there are job losses. After suffering brain injuries at birth, a nine-year-old girl from Newport has been awarded a £2 million compensation package. Harriet Riley was crippled by cerebral palsy after her brain was starved of oxygen during her delivery at the city's Royal Gwent Hospital. She can't speak or walk. She will also receive £325,000 a year for the rest of her life. The Welsh Government has been criticised for cutting one of two Daily Express train services linking Holyhead with Cardiff. The move will save half a million pounds a year. Plaid Cymru insists the change amounts to a downgrade, although the Welsh Government describes it as an enhancement, with new stops in North East Wales. Here's Roger Pinney. They called the service Gerard Gumro, and it was launched back in 2008 by the then Deputy First Minister, Yan Wynne Jones. Remember, the Welsh Government at the time was a Labour Plaid Cymru coalition. Last year, a second daily train was added, again with first and second class carriages. Now Labour here governs alone, Plaid Cymru finds itself in opposition, and the service is cut. It reduces the services and reduces it uh, in a way which I think is totally unacceptable. The intention uh, that I had was to improve services between North and South. Very bad day for people in the North because now we only have one express service between North and South, whereas we should have a two of a good standard. And this is a very retrograde step by, by the, the Labour government. But apart from saving half a million pounds, will the change really make much of a difference? There'll still be direct trains between Holyhead and Cardiff. It's just they'll stop more often, take around 30 minutes longer and won't have first class. The operator Arriva Trains Wales says there will be no overall reduction in service. And the Welsh Government goes as far as to describe the change as an enhancement. The service will stop at Flint and Wrexham and return from Cardiff after six in the evening. The new schedule will start in September. The Independent Police Complaints Commission says more than 600 allegations of corruption were made against Welsh forces between 2008 and 2011. The Chief Constable of David Powys Police, Ian Arundale, said more than 90% of the referrals his force made to the IPCC did not relate to faking evidence. Right, let's go back to the Olympic celebrations now and see what's happening in the centre of Cardiff. Good evening, welcome... Good evening. Welcome back to our live coverage of the Olympic flame arriving in Cardiff. And, well, it's quite apt. Recognise the Millennium Stadium. And guess who's running with the Olympic flame at the moment? It's Grand Slam champion Sam Warburton, captain of Wales. He's running through the streets now as it heads past Cardiff Castle and on its way here uh, to Cooper's Field. Uh, Basically, I think you can see he might have passed it on now, but it's uh, making its way through the streets. The torch will have covered 102 miles. 117 torch bearers will have carried it. And that looks like Sam. There he is. I recognise that stride. He's usually running on the pitch of the Millennium Stadium. Uh, but basically, Jamie, it, it weighs about two pounds of sugar. So no problem for Sam carrying that. What a wonderful moment. And of course, that torch is just uh, running past the Millennium Stadium. Don't believe for a moment that uh, the London 2012 Olympic Games is, of course, an exclusively London event because, of course, the London 2012 Olympic Games begins in Wales, in Cardiff, right there in that very stadium you can see from our helicopter. Hey, Jamie, I don't know whether you're wondering, but you might be wondering what happens to the torch overnight. Well, there are members of the TST. Now, this is the torch security team, and they basically take it in turn to look after it. Uh, it's stored in a lantern overnight at the Flame actually stays in the same room as one of the Met officers and I think they're about to do a kiss here now as Sam passes it on and hopefully we'll be speaking to him, hopefully if he can get here on time in the next few minutes. Wonder what's happening at City Hall. Well, it's a fantastic atmosphere here. The Olympic torch may have passed by but I can tell you that it's still very much in full swing here. The 
playing, thousands of people relaxing, enjoying the sunshine and having a great time. And it really was pretty special when the Olympic torch passed these giant rings standing 18 metres tall in front of City Hall in Cardiff. And Jason, you had a bit of a moment, didn't you? Do you know what? I have to say, I had a moment. The torchbearer ran past and I was thinking, look, here we are. We've got these giant, iconic Olympic rings. The torchbearer is walking past us. And I have to say, a shiver went down my spine. I was that excited. And who wouldn't have a moment? Well, let's talk to Lynn Davis, who's carried the Olympic torch within the last one. Olympic gold medalist, Lynn, what was it like? One of the happiest days of my life, uh, Lucy. I, I've been lucky enough to compete in three Olympic Games, and that experience there was inspirational. It's up there with all the great moments of my life. Very happy, a very proud one, and confirmed my belief that the true value of the Olympic Games, and the toilets, is inspirational, especially for young people, to run along that uh, group of people out there on either side, the joy of their faces, the young people who love you, it's a dream for them to come true. And I'm very, very proud and privileged as a Welshman to take part in this iconic day. Absolutely brilliant. Love it. Love everyone. Brilliant. the torch, how did you get nominated? Uh, I was nominated for uh, the fact that I've been involved in the Plegas for the last 33 years uh, with Swansea Harriers. We're celebrating the 50th anniversary of this event and also for the work that I've done as well with, with my, uh, my football team. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Well, you don't need me to tell you that it's absolutely scorching here. It is hotter here than in Greece. And uh, let's find out what the next couple of days has in store. Derek Brockway is at the castle for us tonight in Cardiff with a forecast. Derek. Thanks very much, Jamie. Yes, it's a glorious evening here in the grounds of Cardiff Castle. A gold medal, a gold medal uh, to the weather today. Lots of sunshine right across Wales to welcome the Olympic torch. In fact, it has been the hottest day of the year so far. I've got some temperatures to, to show you. 24 Celsius to high in Bryn Mawr and Abba Sachan. Uh, while the hot spot today was Pembrey and Carmarthenshire, a toasty 28 Celsius, 82 Fahrenheit, as Jamie has already said it's hotter here than in Greece which is amazing now the Olympic torch continues its journey tomorrow it will leave Cardiff Bay in sunshine it's going to be warm and breezy in Merthyr Tydfil sunny and breezy in Neath Talbot and it's going to be a cracking day uh, in Swansea tomorrow a beautiful evening tomorrow evening for the celebrations there temperatures into the 20s but don't be fooled there will be a breeze tomorrow but the Sun will be very fierce so remember the sun cream factor to 15 or higher is best. So a lovely evening for the concert in uh, Cooper's Field. Nice and warm, a bit of a breeze blowing. Tonight, fine, we'll keep a clear sky. Last night, parts of South Wales had their warmest May night on record. Uh, tonight will be a little more comfortable for sleeping. A bit of a breeze, lowest temperatures 12 to 16 Celsius. Tomorrow's chart shows high pressure to the north of Scotland, low pressure uh, over the Atlantic, and that means easterly winds for Britain. So tomorrow, is going to be a beautiful day. The whole nation bathed in sunshine from dawn until dusk. It'll turn out lovely and warm as well. Very warm. Temperatures not as high as today, but still well above average. 25, 26 Celsius quite widely. That's up to 79 Fahrenheit. But it will feel fresher than today with a brisk and gusty easterly wind. So the journey of the torch tomorrow, the Olympic flame passing through Dinas Powys, uh, Pontypri, the Port Talbot. It's going to be lovely and warm with a breeze. If you're heading to the seaside tomorrow, a gorgeous day, uh, but you may need a windbreak. There will be a gusty easterly wind. 26 the high in Aberaeron with the wind off the land, 23 in Porth Cole with a breeze off the sea. Now, tomorrow night, uh, there will be a, it will be fine and clear again. Uh, temperatures dropping to 12 to 16 Celsius, the wind easing as well. Uh, Sunday, I think, will bring a bit of a change. Some sunshine, yes, but cloud will drift up from the south, and that may bring the threats of a few showers, which could be heavy and thundery. The best of the sunshine on Sunday in the north. Lighter winds on Sunday. Temperatures not as high, but still pretty good for this time of year. Now, on Sunday, the torch continues 
its journey uh, to leave Swansea in sunshine, moving westwards to Carmarthenshire. By the time it reaches Haverford West in Pembrokeshire, it may be cloudy. And then Aberystwyth is likely to be cloudy. Temperatures around 18 Celsius. So there we are. Some cracking weather this weekend for the Olympic torch. Enjoy the celebrations, enjoy the sunshine and stay tuned. There's plenty more to come on BBC Wales today. Derek, thank you very much indeed. There certainly is. I can tell you the Olympic torch is about to arrive here in Coopersfield and set alight that huge great big cauldron on the stage behind me. For people like Wales captain Sam Warburton or uh, Lynn Davis, uh, our Olympian athlete, it isn't really any big deal being mobbed and running past these thousands and thousands of people who've lined all the streets. But if you're someone who isn't used to that sporting celebrity, well, today has been the most extraordinary day. We've been following the stories of some of the torch bearers, and here's their story. Apart from the nerves, I intend to enjoy the moment. <laughs> I honestly didn't think, from the amount of people that were put forward, that I would have the opportunity to be involved in this. Every day, which gets closer, I get a little bit more nervous. <laughs> the thing that I found most amazing when I told people about it, just how excited everybody else is. They're saying things like, oh, it's wonderful that I know somebody who's actually going to carry the torch. I rang one of my sons and he just said, awesome, ma'am, awesome. And, you know, how often does son say to you, 30-year-old son say to you, awesome, ma'am. My husband nominated me. I've now been teaching yoga for 25 years, doing seven classes a week. I shan't be running, but I will be jogging and possibly, if necessary, if the torch is heavier or a bit more awkward than I expect, I will be walking very fast. <laughs> As the day is getting closer, I'm getting more and more nervous. <laughs> I do feel humble that I was put forward, honoured that I was chosen. I'm very pleased to be given the chance to be able to do this and be involved in such a big thing as the Olympics. When I was seven, all my sights started to deteriorate. So I can see people just in the detail. In January 2011, I had a heart transplant and we did have quite a few complications, which meant I had to learn to walk after being medically paralyzed. Like I didn't think I'd be here this year. And not only am I here, which is brilliant, <laughs> but I'm actually being given the chance of a lifetime to be able to carry the Olympic torch. I play sport, I coach sport, I watch sport on TV, <laughs> so it is a big part of my life. But I think by providing it for other people, hopefully it'll set them on the right path. When I'm running, I won't just be running for myself, I'll be running for my family, my friends, my community, and for the whole of Newport in general really, so I'm hoping to represent them all. It is a huge thing, it is a once in a lifetime opportunity, it really is. The number of people throughout Abergavenny is amazing and it's just wonderful to be part of it all. I felt as though it was a real privilege. I really enjoyed it. It's like wonderful being here and to see so many faces you know. It's excellent. Hooray! Good. <laughs> the build-up was excellent. Hearing all the crowd here, I couldn't have imagined it would be like that. Thanks to everyone for cheering, it just made the experience all the more better and i um, really proud that I got the chance to do this today. Oh, it's amazing with all the people shouting, encouraging you on. You needed it really. I didn't think I'd be here to this year, so to be here and be able to carry the torch has been one out of one year to remember. Great to you, Robin. That was a, a dream come true.
Well, I'm in the heart of Coopersfield, and let me tell you, the atmosphere is electric. That is because 16,000 people have gathered here today for one reason only, to get a glimpse of that torch as it travels through Wales and ends up here this evening. We've had lots of entertainment, singers, dancers, BMXs, you name it. One group who have already been on stage is a group from Cardiff, a dance group, Rubicon. Now, Victoria, what was it like to go on stage? It was absolutely fantastic. We all spent weeks before preparing for it. It was nice to get on stage and finally do it, and I was really proud to be back the Olympics. Brilliant. And Olivia, what are you doing about the Olympics? How excited are you? Oh, extremely excited. Myself and Vicky have been to London a few weeks ago to make a short dance film which is going to get played throughout the duration of the Olympics, which is very exciting. And one young man who's very proud, the family must be proud tonight, because uh, I believe your sister, she's r run with a torch today, is that right? Yeah, she has, and she was in Ross on Wild. I was very proud of her. Um, it's a great thing to be a torchbearer and mark the start of the Olympics, but obviously it's been a build-up as well. And as a young ambassador, I've looked to promote the, the values, and it's been an excellent thing, and I'm so proud to be here today from Special Fair. So Wales are really getting behind this Olympic fever, yeah? Definitely, yeah. It's really exciting and we're all behind it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the evening. It's been fantastic so far. I'm getting excited. It's not long to go at all. Just a while to go and we will see the torch coming here. Thank you very much indeed and a very warm welcome back to uh, this end of uh, Cooper's Field right in the heart of Cardiff. Can you imagine how amazing it must be to sing in front of the 15,000 people who've gathered here for this amazing concert tonight? Emily Sandy was on stage a little earlier on. Emily, good to see you and lovely to see you and lovely to hear you. What was it like singing in front of all of these people? Fantastic. The crowd is really great. Everyone's in such good spirits because of the weather and everyone's just so excited about the torch coming. So it was a really good show. And you're part of the Olympic story. You're having such a tremendous time in your career at the moment you're doing so well in the charts I mean it's all it's going well for you isn't it yeah it's been a really good year so I'm happy and it's a great day to celebrate it all today what's it like just looking out and seeing such a massive crowd have you been to Wales before have you have you played to these sort of numbers in Wales in the sunshine before um, I haven't I've been to Wales and performed at a very intimate gig so now coming here is like a complete contrast so it was really a fantastic experience Emily, stay, uh, stay with me because we're watching these live pictures now mm. from the helicopter and this is the Olympic torch which is just a matter of moments away. You can see the ceremony there and get an idea of the thousands and thousands of people here in the heart of Cardiff just outside the castle crossing over the bridge who are just a few moments away from coming into Cooper's Field and this is what it's all about. We've been listening to the bands here for the last uh, hour or so but this is what it's about. It's the, the torch bearers, the Olympic torch bearers walking towards the final moment. For this day one they're going to light the cauldron in the middle of that stage which until now has been home to so many musicians, so many big names from the world of music. It is the most spectacular night. Wherever you're watching in Wales, this has been the most extraordinary experience. The atmosphere is a cross between something like Glastonbury and a Welsh Rugby International. Only when you see rugby in Wales do you normally see these kind of numbers lining the streets. This is another one of those they're lighting the last torch now. This is what they call the kiss, where one torchbearer hands over to another. And this is Melanie Stevenson, you're now seeing the final torchbearer in Cardiff. What a proud moment in her hometown, the final leg of the torch ceremony today. You've missed it. You get an idea of just the the magnificence of this parkland, of Cooper's Field and, and Butte Park, this green lung, that's what it is, reaching right into the centre of Cardiff. And we're so lucky here to live in this extraordinary city that has this parkland right into the middle of the city centre. We can hear now the roar of the crowd somewhere away from us in the outer part of Butte Park. The atmosphere quite electric as people don't know whether to look at the stage or look behind them. That's how close this all is. This extraordinary climax. The Olympic Games, of course, has only ever been played in the UK on three occasions in 1908. In 1948, they called that the Austerity Games. And, of course, this year, in 2012. Maybe they'll call this the Austerity Games, too. But for tonight, all those troubles in Greece and Europe forgotten for truly a magnificent evening the end almost of the first day of the Olympic torch arriving in the capital city in Cardiff
look at those crowds, we think there may be as many as 15 or 18,000 people who have come into Cooper's Field, all of them here to witness a moment of history in the shadows of the historic castle built by the Romans as a lookout across the Bristol Channel. Tonight they're looking out not for enemies or for pirates, they're looking out for the Olympic torch which started its journey in Olympia. Tonight it's crossed the border from England into Wales at Monmouth early this morning and has snaked its way, welcomed by thousands of people in every corner of South Wales. For anyone who thought it would be something of a damp squib, think again, this has been the most extraordinary occasion, and this only the end of the first day. of excited people here this evening in Cardiff but none more so than this young man because Christian you are running with a torch tomorrow is that right? Yes it is. Have you trained for it? Are you in good shape? Yeah I mean uh, I'm in a, a part of an athletics club in Blimey Gwent so uh, a lot of training has been going on amongst exams and yeah I feel happy and in shape. It's a big honour for you to do that isn't it? Yeah, incredible it's, uh, it's been massive I you know no one could have thought that you know one little boy from Emmerville be carrying such a such an inspirational flame for everyone. Well, we wish you luck tomorrow. I hope you look as cool as you do tonight and enjoy, you, enjoy your opportunity. Thank, Thank you. you. You're watching an extended edition of BBC Wales Today, live from Cardiff, and the arrival of the Olympic torch arriving in the capital city. 15 or 17,000 people have come from Cardiff and far beyond on this glorious evening in May to watch the final moments of day one of the Olympic torch in Wales. We're just a few moments away from that cauldron in the middle of that stage, in the middle of this glorious park being lit. So just explain to us and the people watching at home, what was it like running that last bit in here? What were people saying? Were they cheering? Were they clapping? What were they saying to you? Oh, it felt like the whole of Cardiff was out just saying congratulations, well done, keep going. It was amazing. And you're a local Cardiff girl. I remember hearing that you were saying your mum was going to come tonight with pom-poms. Can you see her in the crowd anywhere? 
I'm sure she'll be waving somewhere. I can't quite see her, but I'm sure she's the one screaming the loudest. <laughs> and where were you? How did you find out that you would have this honour? Um, I heard last year, um, I was nominated through Diabetes UK and the Coca-Cola Flame programme, um, and it's just been a whirlwind ever since. And did you walk? Did you run? Were you practising what you were going to do? I did a bit of everything, I think. <laughs> well, congratulations. Let's give her a huge round of applause. Melanie, thank you very much. What a historic moment you've been watching live coverage of the arrival of the Olympic torch in Wales in the heart of Cardiff in Coopersfield. And I'm joined now by uh, Sam Warburton, the uh, captain of Wales, who was one of the torchbearers. We watched him just a few moments ago carry the torch through the centre of Cardiff. And uh, Professor Laura McAllister from Sport Wales. Sam, let me start with you first of all. What was it like carrying the torch? Uh, surreal, to be honest. It was a great experience knowing you know, how few people have been selected to do it across Britain. So, uh, you know, I'm very privileged that I was uh, asked to do it. I mean, people like you are used to the great occasion. People like you are used to walking out in front of thousands and thousands of people and, and this kind of adulation. But for the people who aren't used to it, I mean, it's the most extraordinary experience, isn't it? We were on the bus. Uh, you know, the bus was taking us to our certain drop-off points uh, and certain people were pretty nervous. They've obviously never experienced anything like that. Um, but everybody's going to be nervous in this sort of situation. You know, you're representing the Olympics. Uh, it's a great occasion. What's it like carrying that? It's not too heavy, to be honest. It was okay. Um, it was nice. Uh, it was nice weather, but it's pretty warm from 300 yards. It was a long 300 yards, but um, you know, really, really lucky that I got this and. Uh you know, looking forward to taking it home. Are you surprised by the turnout? I mean, I was in Monmouth this morning and amazed to see thousands and thousands of people, perhaps 10 deep in places in the streets. I mean, has this taken you by surprise? Yeah, you know, when I first came to Cardiff, uh, we got here about half past four, five o'clock, and within about an hour, they just flooded in. Um, it's, it surprised me, but it's great that everybody's jumped on board and got behind the Olympics. Laura McAllister from uh, Sport Wales. Uh, there have been so many noises off, haven't there, about the real worth of London 2012. I mean, for for sportsmen and women, young children who've watched this occasion today. What is the worth of, of, of this ceremony today? Well, I think the Olympics are, are going to be probably the biggest ever marketing campaign for sport we've ever seen. And it's, it's up to all of us, really, to make sure that children are inspired by what they see in London and then subsequently have the opportunity to take part in sport. Because it isn't all about the elite side and the athletes winning medals. It's about enjoying sport and becoming hooked on sport for life. And, uh, uh, Jamie um, Balch is uh, in the crowd there and so many of these people who are just shouting up to uh, Sam Warburton just, he just turned with the Olympic torch like a conquering Greek hero. Magnificent thing to watch isn't it? It is absolutely tremendous. Uh, we'll have uh, more from uh, here in just a few moments. We're going to go over to Claire now, who's uh, on the stage. Claire. Jamie, I've just come down from the stage. There it is, just over there. That was quite an experience. Melanie did it amazingly. And I'm joined by you and again, and by Jamie. Not with silver medals this time, but sum up that for you. I mean, you've both been there. You've both seen it. You've both got the T-shirts. What was that like for you watching the Olympic torch run past you? and be lit in the heart of Cardiff. Believe it or not, just because we've been to a few Olympics, we've never actually seen it. Yeah. You're, you're normally in the That's Olympic the Village training. You've never actually no, seen it? No, because you don't want to burn up any nervous energy. You want to just think about your competition. So it's been a real honour to be here amongst all the people of Cardiff. It's been a great atmosphere. And to see it come past so quickly, it, it, it was great. And what about you, Jamie? You're a Cardiff boy. This means a lot, doesn't oh, it? Oh, you know, great for Cardiff. I totally agree with you. And we haven't seen that because when you compete at an Olympics, you're in the Olympia and you want to focus on your event. So this tonight, I'm I'm actually honoured to be on stage to see the flame get lit in Cardiff. It's fantastic. I'm so excited that this is here in Cardiff. And these thousands of people here tonight, there's been lots of criticism about, you know, it's a London Games. OK, we know the London Games, it's happening in London, the Olympics, but are we a bit more part involved because of things like tonight? Well, yeah, definitely. You know what we've got to remember? In Cardiff, we've got the football. The football kicks off two days before the opening ceremony. So, you know, we've got to get down there as well as public and support this. I guarantee everyone here will never see this in their lifetime again. So they've got to support the Olympic movement and it is fantastic. Look at the crowd, it's magical. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. And that is day one. But don't forget, it's just the first stop. There's 
many more miles to cover. Of course, we'll be live in Kafili tomorrow. And of course, later on tomorrow night, we're in Swansea. It's going to Aberystwyth. It's going to Bangor. Jamie's off. And don't forget, it all starts tomorrow morning. Set the alarm. 6.29 in Cardiff Bay, outside the Norwegian church. And guess who is the runner? I can tell you. It's Matt Smith, Doctor Who's Matt Smith. So make sure you get down there and cheer him on. Well, the Olympic flame has had a wonderful first day in Wales, but there's many more miles to cover and we'll be with it along the way. Thanks for watching from all of us on this special Wales today. Good night.